Hello there, this is John Richard Klein, the Cassette Master, um, coming at you again, shooting on October 7th, 2022, safety on the Gregorian calendar, bidding you all welcome to this video, and giving a huge thank you to Amberola 1B on YouTube. I have received three packages in the mail and will be unboxing them on video. Brought to you in part by Text Message Productions. Looks like my friend Luke has an interview. like this have surfaced first in 2011 and then in uh, I think 2019 back before all the lockdowns and the world started really going downhill cancel culture started going rampant whoa Now, is this the most desired one of all? This is a very interesting machine. Many would desire greatly such a cassette machine. This is a Nakamichi cassette deck with a very unusual style. I heard some rattling in the box. I had to turn it over because the thing had flipped over so hopefully it's uh, uh, I think it's just missing some screws or something. The thing is moving about within the case. This is a Nakamichi cassette deck. It has calibration adjustments for the recording. My goodness! For each channel and the bias Okay, this is going to be really good. So, on this deck, first of all, the interesting thing about its design is it is at an angle. It would sit like this. I'll probably put this at one of my sub-studios. Let's eject it real quick. Oh, wow. That's unusual. Wow! Unbelievable! Things head I'm hoping is alright. Might just be dirty. Hopefully not damaged. But anyway, this is a beautiful cassette deck from the 1970s. Uh, I know it needs some work. Um, Ed told me, um, or Amarillo 1B told me that uh, the recording was really, really weak, but the playback was working. So probably leaky capacitors or something along those lines. But anyway, very beautiful cassette deck. It's got Dolby noise reduction, MPX filter. Oh wow, even does a 400 hertz tone. Oh, that's unbelievable. And 10 kilohertz test tones. Wow. It's got a lot of neat things on there. And uh, oh, it's got memory counter as well. And let's look at the back here. It literally has a block diagram for its, its design. Now that is really something. You don't normally see a block diagram on, a, on just you know, a consumer product, or any product for that matter. And um, it's quite something to see. And of course, appropriately for Nakamichi, made in Japan. Now, we continue with our boxes, because we have two more boxes that are waiting to be unboxed. I have to move all this packing material, or shall I say, material, for all the military people out there, and war mongers. You know, just thinking about the nuclear war coming soon. Okay, so, um, 
you know, because probably we're going to be new soon. Just, just saying. You know, the world is, you know, coming to a close. I think. I think uh, the end of the age is not far. Um, some people might call me crazy, but who cares anymore? Okay, so here's another box. Do not stack. You can see a the way it's shaped here suggests things have been uh, have been stacked on top of it. So that's not surprising. This is it the most desired recorder. Is it the cream? The cream of the crop. Because I know one of the machines is the cream. Alright, let's get all the packing material off. There's a lot in here. I see it's upside down. I don't know why it was stacked up, put in upside down. But I see a vent. Ah, can you even see what I'm doing? Ha <laughs> ha! Guess you can. Okay. Take off all this bubble wrap. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Mmm. Easy on the knife here. You can see it's an Akai recorder that is starting to reveal itself. Again, from the great nation of Japan. Oh, hopefully it doesn't generate too much electrostatic discharge for this thing. No doubt it uses any electrostatic sensitive components. Very nice machine. Convert a deck. One micron gap head, three head. It also has, you can do, uh, well, just to play the track. Um, it's the Akai 4400. Uh, two speed. Also has a, oh, that's equalization. It uses a capstan sleeve for speed change and then a switch for equalization change. Uh, uh, mm. Okay, here is the Akai uh, Converted Deck, Akai 4400. I believe this machine does work from what I've been told. And has limited sound due to the built-in speakers, but sounds better on an external system. We'll show more of that in detail at a later time. This is the most desired recorder. Let's get this box in view. This is where this is where you gotta take a deep breath. This is the machine that is the most exciting out of all. Probably most of the machines I have in my collection. It's a Etrushka box. A box within a box. Kind of like the old Russian dolls. The Etrushka dolls. Or something like that I think they're called. My mother had acquired a set of those dolls in Russia in 1994. And I had wanted to go on the trip with my mother and I was only three years old. And my mom thought, you're too young. Still to this day, I remember my mom going on that trip and me not getting to go and still wish to this day that I could have gone. But anywho, that's beside the point. And now, considering Russia, you know, we're probably going to get nuked. Oh. 
first off, a big thank you to Ed for giving me the privilege of being able to own such a machine. This is absolutely just phenomenal beyond words. Um, if you can see what the what the device what the thing inside says, WCCO radio. I also want to give a shout out to Speaker Freak ninety five since he works with radio stuff and transmitters and and the like. Just got to get a, a, a better view of this. Now we're going to take this off and see what it's like. The weight is a good sign. Large capstan sleeve. VU meter. Oh, oh my. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh. 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 It's missing some of the screws. But that's not a big deal. And one of them came off here. Let's screw it back down. Oh man. This is almost certainly was already like that. Unbelievable. Thing of beauty. I really hope this was already like that. I'm supposing it could have been caused by a screw. Uh, maybe not. What a unique smell it has. Oh, wow. Okay, so look in here first. This looks like a steering wheel. Here's another screw. I don't know why all these screws came off. Probably all the vibrations. controller is probably going to need a trip to Terry's. My goodness. Okay. I'm not sure how to fully operate this. I don't know if the controller. See why the controller not going away is one question. Hopefully I can figure that all out. But this is, let's take it out of the box. Anyway, you can see a steering wheel looking thing here. This is a big flywheel. It's an external flywheel. And um, to help regulate the speed, it goes on the capstan. This, let's take it out of the box. Relatively lightweight considering uh, what it is. I mean, it's not super light, but it's not as heavy as, say, the Nagro Recorder. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. It's got a wonderful smell. Let's zoom out a little bit. This is the Amplifier Corporation of America. Magnemite tape recorder model 610 DV. Full track mono, seven one half inches per second, single speed. Professional grade, although unfortunately for John Clark, it uses quarter inch. Um, reel to reel tape recorder. It's from the 1950s, early 1950s, mind you. Oh, I can see the controller has already had been bad rubber and then it has a rubber band thing around it. Um, <clears throat> but I have a feeling it's supposed to disengage whenever it's stopped, so it's probably just a lever that I need to move or something. But, um, wow. 
This is a vacuum tube machine, which shouldn't come as a surprise considering early 50s. I think about 1952 or thereabouts. What a cool looking head. It's clockwork driven. This is a clockwork driven recorder. That was the handle. I don't know if this other screw is completely gone or if it was around in the box somewhere. I don't know if this marring here was done by a screw that came off or if that had already happened in the past. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping it was already like that in the past. Um, but my, this thing I've been, I've been wanting to get one of these for a long time. Never thought I'd actually get one. Wouldn't have been surprised if I'd lived throughout my entire life from birth to death. Excuse me, sorry about the camera handling. From birth to death, having never acquired a Magnemite recorder. Because these things are not easy to come by. They are highly sought after. Let's make sure nothing's going to scratch that. Ugh. Yeah, there's some screw-like deals. I'm going to... The rubber feet are kind of pushed in a little bit, exposing a little bit of the actual metal. Let's put it on this, this here. So, my, my, this is unbelievable. I'm hoping I can get this thing to turn. It should, I know that it's told the spring mechanism is, is operative. So we're going to, I got the handle. Thicker threading than the uh, Japanese uh, Emmy quarter uses, so it's not compatible with the Emmy quarter. Just handle it right on in there. Oh, it's a little winding sound. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, boy, that, that type of thing turns easily. Thing's a pleasure. Now let's see if it runs at all. Oh, man, Drief, I don't want to scratch that. Oh, don't, I don't want to scratch that. I mean, it's scratch-resistant material on this table, but still. Having a hard time. Um, I'll have to figure out what's going on. Otherwise, I, I, I didn't uh, crank it enough or if something's... Something's going on. I don't want to force the poor thing. I have to figure out what's going on. But um, <clears throat> told the mechanism worked, but apparently it's having some kind of problem. Something might have uh, caught caught inside. We'll take a look at it. These screws come up out easily so we're going to just take a, a, a peek inside So I am very eager to see well first off what it's like inside in general but also just to make sure to see what if it's like everything is okay. Oh, these, Those are meant to stay there. Those are handles to take it out. There's a knot on the other side. <clears throat> uh, take the handle out. Whew. Yep, nut fell in there. I see a mica capacitor already. Okay, let's put that little screw back on. There's plenty of room in there. 
Kind of tiny screw had come off. I don't want to lose that and to figure out where that went. Okay. <sighs> Look inside this magnemite here. That's quite a sight to behold. It's got shock absorption here so that it yeah, to make it not microphonic. This thing smells like the time period it's from. Um, I just want to inspect that. There's a belt in there too. For this uh, take up reel. The spring mechanism looks very well made. Which is good. I'm just not sure what it's catching on. It's a little rusted on part. I'll, have to make, I'll be making a better video of this in the future. There's definitely some similarities between the clockwork mechanism of this machine and the clockwork, I mean it's not the same design, I mean not the same mechanism but it's just the design, the way the gearing is done is very similar to the uh, the Japanese <coughs> EMI Excuse me, not EMI. EMI quarter. It's lowercase EMI. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not the same as British EMI. It is different. Um, okay, so let's do something here. I already see one of the wires is clearly off. I just want to know why the mechanism is not wanting to, to turn. Uh. It just ever so slightly moves that little little piece. You're not supposed to be able to turn the cap stand because it's got a worm gear there. Maybe it's just not moving it enough. There's a thing to make sure it only moves so much. By covering it with my head and everything. As long as that spring mechanism isn't broken somehow. Doesn't look like it is. Maybe it just didn't wind it enough. Maybe it's that simple. Connection for the B battery. I suppose I only turn the bottom one of those things. I think it would turn both. Oh, it's hitting some. Oh, it's a. Okay, I see what it is. I see exactly what it is. The speed regulator has a little screw that holds on one of the three things for the speed regulator. Okay, I, I'm not describing it well. Um, I know exactly what it is. It's the screw that came out is the problem.
This mechanism has these three little thing weights on it. There's a screw that holds this down on here. The screw came out and it was floating around in the box. I just need to put the little screw back on. So I'll be right back with the driver. Okay, I'm back with the driver. Let's go ahead and screw this. I didn't bring any tweezers with me. Screw down. Make sure the other one's tight. That one was loose. Here we go. Starting to turn. It's not very strong though. Some more winding here. It can be wound live, just like the uh, the Japanese uh, Emmy quarter. That thing takes a long time to stop. Okay, let's so watch it. Let's watch it turn. Let's stick a reel on there so we can watch it spin. All right, put this back so we don't lose it. This right here, I zoom out. All right, so let's go ahead and watch it turn. Nineteen fifties, a little mechanism after screwing a screw that came off back on still works. Oh, there it goes. It's a lot better. Fun. It's got a lot of uh, slack, oh, or not a lot of this. Hopefully, it's got enough drive to to pull the tape. We'll see if it does. Let me check the time because I got to go somewhere soon, and I don't want to be late. Monday, October 17th. Oh my goodness. Let me think. I mean, my. Well, that's a Monday. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Hello, Lucas, comma. That would be fantastic! Exclamation point. I will be in town that day, comma. I will get home from work at 5.20, period. At 5.20 p.m. It took everything away!
Every single thing I typed in there, wrote in there, spoke in there, took it away when I went to a pin, a, a pin to the... Hey, Lucas! Exclamation point! It would be great for you to come. Period. I will be in town that day, comma, I will get home at 5.20 p.m. Period. Why does it do this? Look at this. Oh my gosh. Viewers, look at this. The phone does this thing where I say 5.20 p.m., then after it puts 20 p.m. Hey Lucas, it would be great for you to come. Period, period, come on. I will be in town that day. I will get home at 5.20 p.m. 20 p.m. I said 5.20 p.m. once. Okay. Anyway, I'm doing a lot of digressing here. And it's Lucas with a K. Put my address in there. Well, my friend Lucas is going to be visiting me uh, October 17th and taking me to dinner and also seeing my collection of recorders. So I'm hoping I can get this Magnavite working in time to show Lucas. That would be fantastic. Okay, so let's put a reel on here, or a, 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 a tape on here. My gosh, if that mark was caused by shipping, I'm going to cry a river. If it was already there, though, that's just part of life because it would it may have happened, you know, years and years and years ago. Either way, I still love this machine to death. Of course, it's probably covered up and put a reel on it. It mostly is. Um, okay. A machine that has yet to have a YouTube video made of it is having its reels re re released from it. There's a lot of recorders I still need to make videos of. Or I've made partial videos, oh shoot, partial videos of and have never uh, got around to uh, editing. I don't know why I'm so forgetful. This one is yet to make have a video of it even though I got it last year. Goes this direction, just like the uh, Yumi quarter. It goes the reverse direction. I guess these mechanisms typically went that other direction because they were probably could also have been used with turntables. And I know that's why the Yumi quarter goes that direction because it could be used in the turntable. It was probably the same reason here. The same mechanism was probably compatible with being used with a record player, a wind-up gramophone, you know. So let's see what it looks like with a tape on it. It already looks phenomenal. Let's see if there's enough drive. This tape, this just reel feels very loose. I think there might be a... I don't know if it's a loose screw or just a lot of... Let's just say uh, very high tolerances in the manufacturing process. You know you want to. <laughs> this thing is fun. <laughs> oh, the tape is sticking to the freaking cap stand. No wonder it's doing that. That's weird. I should just clean it or if it's the the tape itself just 
It doesn't stick on other machines, but it's really wanting to, I guess because this thing is so wide, it's wanting to stick to it for some reason. Wow. Okay, well. Needs a little help to... There we go. Yeah. Need to wind it up more, but anyway. Probably takes quite a few turns of the handle to actually crank the machine fully, I mean, I would, I would... I would guess it, it, you have to crank it quite a few times to actually fully wind the thing up. Um, I mean, it's 50 times for that Japanese machine, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's even more, more windings for this device. Um, let's take some more looks inside. We've got the uh, circuitry over here. Now, Amberola. 1B had uh, gone for some work on this thing, sent it out to someone who attempted working on it and was unsuccessful. And um, already it looks like I can see where some things used to be soldered that aren't soldered anymore. So there's things that will have to be figured out. And the problem is, is I don't think I have a schematic. And I don't know if I can find a schematic for this machine. I, I looked online and didn't seem to have any luck finding a schematic for the Magnemite. So, it's going to be a bit of a an experience just going through this and figuring out where things went. You know, looking up at the pinouts for the various different vacuum tubes. You know, look at common amplifier circuits, vacuum tube amplifiers, to see what's typically hooked up, you know, and um, figure out where everything went. Of course, there's these wires that got that are been removed, so it's possible these went to these points. Oh, actually, come to think of it, I remember now. The side, this thing's been modified in the past. There's a hole here where there's something had been installed, probably a professional microphone connector um, or an external power connector. Um, so. That might be what those wires are about. What a thing this is. What a beautiful device. I, I'm just tickled to, to have one of these machines. Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. Thing of beauty. I managed to crank this guy a little more and A bit more oomph now. Starts up a lot better. Yeah. A lot more confident. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this thing is just... Oh my... Man! Yeah, this thing is just amazing. Oh boy, this is unbelievable. <laughs>